Elizabeth Warren released a curious new plan yesterday. Um, let me share that with you. This is her Twitter thread on it. She says the following. Disinformation and online foreign interference erode our democracy, and Donald Trump has invited both. Anyone who seeks to challenge and defeat Donald Trump in the 2020 election must be fully prepared to take this on, and I've got a plan to do it. In the 2016 election, we saw how digital disinformation was used to influence and suppress voters, but four years later, we're hardly better prepared for it. Donald Trump has welcomed foreign interference in our elections, and if he isn't removed from office, he'll continue to do so. Anyone who seeks to challenge and defeat Donald Trump must be prepared to take on the full array of disinformation that foreign actors and people in and around his campaign will use to divide Democrats, suppress Democratic votes, and erode the standing of the Democratic nominee. So today, I'm making a pledge. I will not knowingly use or spread disinformation to benefit my own candidacy and or damage others, and I will fight disinformation aimed at my campaign, my opponents, and voters. By the way, says she's fighting disinformation. Remember when, like, three and a half minutes ago, she accused Bernie Sanders of being a secret sexist? Pretty sure that's disinformation. I'm sending a clear message to anyone associated with the Warren campaign. I will not tolerate the use of false information or false accounts to attack my opponents, promote my campaign, or undermine our elections, and I urge my fellow candidates to do the same. I'm also calling on tech companies like Facebook, Twitter, and Google to take real steps right now to fight disinformation spread on their platforms. The safety of our democracy is more important than shareholder dividends or CEO salaries and CEO salaries. Campaigns and tech companies can take a number of steps to slow the spread of misinformation right now. And as president, I'll take a series of actions to further address the spread of disinformation. The stakes of this election are too high. We need to fight the spread of false information that disempowers voters and undermines democracy. I'll do my part, and I'm calling on my fellow candidates and big tech companies to do their part, too. Okay, I, I really hope that without me even saying anything, you know the problem with this. I really hope that I don't have to spell it out for you clearly for you to just innately get exactly what the issue is here. Because... The bottom line is, guys, this is deeply, deeply unconstitutional and un-American because what she's talking about is having the government get involved and try to fight disinformation. Yeah, great idea, Liz. Maybe we can call this new agency the Ministry of Truth or something to that effect. This is not... The government is not in the business of determining... What's acceptable and not acceptable discourse? That would be an obvious violation of the First Amendment and free speech and freedom of the press. Now, you don't have to like everything that's out there floating around in the ether, but you have to allow it to float around in the ether. You can fight back with your own words and your own arguments and say, hey, I don't think that's true. But to talk about the government getting involved to stop the spread of disinformation, Elizabeth Warren, I got news for you. Oftentimes, the government is the source of of disinformation. Are you kidding me? We're going to trust the government? I don't care. I don't care what your ideology is. If you're a Republican, are you going to are you going to trust a Democratic administration to tell you what's true and not? If you're a Democrat, are you going to trust a Republican administration to tell you what's true or not? Even if you say, "Okay, take partisanship out of it and the parties will have nothing to do with it." Okay, are you going to trust the FBI, the CIA, the freaking DMV? Like, what are we talking about here? Higher career bureaucrats who are just somehow perfectly objective philosopher kings who can determine what's true and what's not, what's acceptable and what's not acceptable? Are, like, what are you talking about, man? The main point is, who watches the Watchmen? It's the age-old age question. Who watches the Watchmen? Oh, you got these people who are, you know, the arbiters of that which is true, and then what? They don't have their own biases? and their own opinions, and their own beliefs, there's no such thing as perfect objectivity, you know? And even people who maybe watch this show and really like this show, I would tell you guys, I struggle to be as, I try my best to be as objective as possible, but I'm sure I don't get there. 
And uh, but the difference is I actually explain my biases up front. I tell you guys what my beliefs are up front, which is the kind of honesty that allows you to tap into my mindset and see the prism through which I'm viewing the world. I try to give the facts and be as objective as possible, but I'm only human. And so I tell you my biases up front. On what planet does Elizabeth Warren think it, that it makes sense to talk about fighting the spread of misinformation or disinformation from within the government? You claim to be a Native American your entire career. What about the, the spread of that disinformation or misinformation? You just accused Bernie Sanders of being secret sexist, uh, a secret sexist. What about that disinformation or misinformation? You know, there was a scandal recently where she said her, you know, her dad is a janitor and her brother had to come out and be like, he's not a janitor. He was never a janitor. What about that? What about, uh, you know, the lie she told about, uh, uh, her pregnancy and a teaching job. She told a lie about that as well. She's had very clear issues with the truth. And she's going to step forward and say, oh, well, we need to, you know, the government needs to get involved to fight disinformation and Facebook needs to step up to fight disinformation. Guys, the whole original point of social media was it's a bathroom wall. Hey, we're not the filter. We don't curate. We don't tell you like, you know, what's OK and what's not OK. We're just the medium. So some, some crazy people are going to put some crazy stuff. True. But also there's going to be non-crazy people who put non-crazy stuff and it's a way to connect the world. That was the old idea. Now, people like Elizabeth Warren are begging Silicon Valley oligarch billionaires to determine what's acceptable and what's not acceptable to say in a public forum. This is so deeply against the First Amendment and free speech and freedom of the press. I mean, that's so obvious. That's clearly what this is. I mean, and also, let's be serious. There is such a thing as, okay, certain things are truth, certain things are false. True, of course, that's a given. But to a Ted Cruz fan, I'm the source of all, you know, misinformation in the world. Now, I say, of course, I'm not. But to them, they say I am. And vice versa. You know, uh, to a Bernie Sanders person, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren and Mayor Pete have been spreading disinformation and misinformation. Uh, to a Joe Biden person or an Elizabeth Warren person or a Mayor Pete person, Bernie Sanders people have been spreading this disinformation and misinformation. Now, again, I know that there is, you know, a, a real world exists. And indeed, there are things that are true and false. But everybody's perception and mindset and their own stream of consciousness is going to get in the way. And that's what I mean. There's no way to, like, perfectly get to the truth. Remember when Facebook said, oh, we're going to do fact checking. One of the uh, outlets that they used for fact checking was like a hack right wing outlet. I don't remember which it was. I think it may have been Daily Caller or National Review or something. But like an outlet that has been consistently wrong about so many things. They're like, well, listen, we got to be balanced. What do you want me to do? You want to fact check and only pick, you know, like left wing outlets? We that's we can't do that. So this is not like the whole conversation is nonsense to even open this door and start walking down this path is stupid. Like, you have to understand that the options are either censorship or not censorship. Those are the only two things on the menu. <laughs> either you start censoring and deplatforming and taking stuff down, or you don't. Now, sure, you could say there's upsides and downsides to both, but I would definitely argue the bigger downsides are with censorship and deplatforming. And having a government agency determine what's true and what's not and, and what's allowed and what's not allowed. And by the way, did you notice in there? What did she say? She said, oh, foreign misinformation. And we need to make sure that, you know, this doesn't, I'm not, we don't use bad information to go after democratic rivals. You know what she's alluding to, right? She's alluding to Julian Assange, WikiLeaks, the 2016 election, and, uh, the facts about the DNC rigging the primary. It says so much about Elizabeth Warren and her campaign and who's running her campaign these days that she used to say when she was asked in a, an interview on mainstream media, hey, was the primary rigged against Bernie Sanders? And she was like, yes. Then a week later, she came out and said, mm, that's not the right word. Did I say that? See, what happened was that someone's in my eyes and I'm not sure if I, maybe I was using too strong language. She went from talking about how the primary is rigged to now concern trolling about how we got the information that indeed proved the primary was rigged. She's saying like, hey, do not allow the spread of information that, you know, talks bad about our fellow Democrats in the lead up to the election because maybe Russia was or wasn't behind the leaks. That's what she's saying. 
So in other words, all that information that we learned about Hillary Clinton and how they were rigging the election, how we learned that Hillary Clinton said, I have public and private positions. And they're not the same. Remember when we learned about that? Remember when she said, I want totally free and open trade borders, which is like NAFTA and, and TPP and PNTR on steroids. We learned that she said all of these things. And then the fact that that was reported on, Elizabeth Warren's like, hey, 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 that's a Russian, uh, that's a Russian psyop or something. So don't report the truth because the truth might hurt my team. What kind of hacky... That's so hacky. And we all know damn well if there were, you know, a WikiLeaks dump on the RNC and Julian Assange exposed the corruption within the RNC, would Elizabeth Warren say, hey, now, don't talk about the substance of those leaks because it might maybe came from Russia or something. She would never say that. She would immediately start talking about the substance of those leaks, obviously. But when it's on the Democratic side, hey, 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 what are you doing? You better take that true information and hide it. See, this is what I mean. You can't... Guys, think about this. If we had a ministry of truth or uh, Facebook acting as the arbiters of truth during the lead up to the Iraq war, what would have happened? What would have happened? They would have actively suppressed and censored every single person who was saying, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I think that um, Saddam Hussein did not work with Osama bin Laden, and I don't think he has weapons of mass destruction. They would have called those people the conspiracy theorists, and the conspiracy theorists would have been right. So, now, don't get me wrong. You know, there's also the downside of Alex Jones going to go out there and, and pretend like um, Sandy Hook is a hoax. He gets to go out there and say terrible things that have negative consequences. That's the price of freedom. But again, the downsides of censorship are way worse than the downsides of freedom. For sure. Because if you start censoring all the stuff that's not convenient, well then, they're, they're, we don't live in a free and open society. We live in an authoritarian state. So I, this is a terrible idea. I don't know if I could sufficiently explain just how bad this idea is. But it's deeply unconstitutional, deeply un-American, and honestly childish and silly and naive too. Like, seriously, that's you think that, uh, you know, all we need to do, we need, we need to actively fight the spread of misinformation and the government should get involved. Do you have any idea how quickly this would get slapped down in court? It would be comical. It'd be comical. Any judge takes one look at this like, well, that's clearly unconstitutional, which is good. <laughs> Thank God we have, you know, in this case, we'd have judicial review in a hypothetical Warren administration where she tries to crack down on free speech. But man, that really does say something. And and the timing of this, too, is very bizarre. Very bizarre. Right after she shoots her own campaign in the foot uh, by accusing somebody who's supposed to be her close ally of secret sexism, and she's flailing and falling all over the place, and people on social media are really pissed at her. That's why there were a barrage of snake emojis went her way. Why? Because she accused her longtime friend and ally, supposedly, of... Sexism, secret sexism, when there's videos of him going back to 1987 saying well, a woman uh, should get elected and things are changing, but not fast enough. He's a, a secret sexist. He's a secret sexist. So people were like, wow, you're a snake. And they started tweeting snake emojis at her immediately after that. I, I pledge to fight the spread of uh, disinformation and misinformation and, and uh, about our Democratic rivals and to not go after them. Isn't that, isn't that good? Let's not fight each other because you guys really don't like me right now, so please get off my ass. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. It really is. What happened to you, Elizabeth Warren? I'm not in the camp of people who said all along, like, no, she's just, she's the worst, and they believe that all along. No, uh, on, the contra on the contrary, her record, she did force Obama to do the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. She did. And that is wildly successful. $12 billion returned to defrauded Americans, actually standing up to Wall Street and big financial institutions. Can't take that away from her. But what on earth has happened to you since then? You've been in Washington a little too long. And man, you're supposed to go there to change Washington, but they changed you. And this is another clear example of that. How you don't realize immediately that this is unconstitutional and ridiculous is beyond me. But indeed, it is unconstitutional and ridiculous. That's clear.